Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 92 of the Whitey and Will Sports Show. Today is Sunday, November 26, 2023. All the Thanksgiving tournaments are in the books from across the state, and we are going to talk about uh, all of that a little bit later in the show. But we have a returning guest on the show and somebody that, uh, listen, if you're if you're going to be in the know about high school basketball for the boys in the state of Illinois, then this is a guy that you need to be following. Uh, we have got Aaron Britton back on the show with us. Uh, he joined us last year. Uh, he is, uh, Mike, he's the, probably the premier authority on high school boys basketball in the state of Illinois. I don't think I'm overstating things to put it that way, am I? No, no, I think that's pretty fair because he knows people in schools that I'm like, who? So, no, he is very good at what he does. Um, friend of the show, friend yeah. of the holiday tournament, um, you know, and we fooled him again to come back and be on our show. Yeah, Aaron, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And, Aaron, I do have one complaint before we get started. We had to wait and start at eight o'clock, so there's a good chance I'm going to be dozing before this is done. You know? Well, I had to get my kids to sleep, so I, I under well, it's about time to get me to sleep too. You know, when you when you get elderly, it uh, bedtime comes early, but we'll we'll work you in our schedule here, so that'll be good. I'm very appreciative of that. So, uh, so if you go to nestohoops.com, it'll re- redirect you to Aaron's site, and he keeps the spreadsheet that you can download from that site, and it has got uh, it's got schedules and results for every team in the state. Uh, I'm still not. We talked to him last year, and I'm still not exactly sure how he does that, and then manages to do anything else with his life. But uh, he's got it down to a science, it seems, and uh, and it's out there again, and in his rankings are also, you know, I mean, the Associated Press does rankings in the state and and they try, but it's it's hard to, it, it, it's a difficult thing to do. But Aaron's got a, his own rankings that uh, that he puts together. And really, if people who know basketball look at those and that's kind of what uh, what they, they go by. And we're going to talk about that. Mike, you got kind of a line of questioning that you want to get started with, but then we'll talk kind of locally about some of the, uh, some of some of the 1A and 2A teams in our area that uh, that show up in those rankings, and I think that's kind of the way this conversation is going to go. Does that sound about right? Right, and, and I mean one thing about Aaron's rankings, they're good. He knows, he sees a lot of teams. That's one of the things a lot of the AP folks see their area. He travels and sees stuff, and. Um, you know, we've had him down here before. He doesn't, you know, now that he's got kids, he doesn't get as make as many road trips as he used to. But um, his rankings are spot on. And the funny thing is, you'll see teams cite, hey, so and so, you know, St. Anthony's number four in 1A. Well, no one has a poll out at Aaron. Okay. So that's Aaron's poll. That's not, you know, something else. So, I kind of cringe sometimes. I'd like to see people cite him a little more for his work he does, but um, he's very good at what he does. And Aaron, I got to say, um, I read through your uh, 1A, 2A, and I I look at your 3A and 4A rankings too. And then I look at your Chicago area and your South of I, you know, I look at them all because I try to kind of look at um, how some of our Christmas tournament teams fall into place sometimes. And sometimes I get really excited because we start getting a lot of people in your rankings and, you know, it just kind of goes back and forth. So um, again, this year, um, your preseason rankings pretty good. You got a new poll coming out tomorrow. You said you got a few minor changes, but nothing too major really. Yeah. The one a is, there's not a whole lot of major changes in one a, uh, there will be a new number one, uh, Tomorrow morning, uh, we'll go ahead and break that. That's going to be Tuscola, uh, the uh, previous number one, Illini Bluffs. They lost two games to two A schools, so it's not like they were awful losses, but they did blow a twenty point lead in one of those losses. Uh, and they're they have some some guard play issues and some three point shooting woes that they're going to have to fight through. But I still I'm feeling comfortable with them being an elite one A team. But Tuscola. One and zero. They beat PBL the either Monday or Tuesday last week uh, in a pretty dominating fashion. 
uh, and they were number two, so they were right on the right on the heels of the Illini Bluffs Tigers. And the other thing is, you know, this area is, you know, pretty familiar with Tuscola. They, you know, they've come, you know, been involved with the St. Anthony sectional um, where they lost a heartbreaker, but then they won the the incredible album sectional last year. Um, so people around here are aware of that. They keep an eye on them. And again, it just, it, it shows credence. And I like the fact that when I look at your rankings, you also don't just say, hey, this team's Four and oh, I got to get them high. You also look at who they play. Yep. Um, taking into consideration the strength of schedule. Uh, and then, you know, I have the computerized strength of schedule nominal value that I give all the teams. Uh, and that's, I don't know, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, it's the only way to give any sort of objectivity to it other than just saying, oh, well, you know, T-Town, they play a great schedule every year. They have the best schedule, you know, and they have one of the best, but it's not always statistically the best. Right, uh, right. No, and that's the thing and, I like about it. So you've got a little math behind. It's just not you sitting down at uh, 2 in the morning Sunday night throwing darts at the list of schools saying, okay, well, we're going to put these guys up there. So I do like that. And, um, yeah, uh, there'll be some uh, Chicagoland 1A teams, sometimes 2A teams that are around 500 that don't really get a lot of recognition in other polls and you've got them very high and people are like, well, come on, they're, they're 500 team. Well, no, they're playing a lot of three and four, a good schools. So that's where their strength of schedule comes from. And, and I'm glad you look at that. Yep. And another school locally for you guys that has uh, an, an outstanding strength of schedule is going to be St. Anthony. Uh, I got them in the top five, uh, even with the two L's, they're not going to drop, uh, Altamont may slide in early, but they, you know, I, I, I would expect them to get in probably before the Christmas term. I think they're still going down to Sessor. You know, they, it's kind of a running joke. I, I never rank Altamont in the preseason <laughs> and they always end up in there right. it's at, at some point throughout the regular season. And I'm sure Johnny appreciates that because if he ends up there late in the year, then he's happy, you know, so. That's fine, you know. And anytime you can get John a little fired up, it's good. Trust me. <laughs> well, I think he'd rather get over that sectional hurdle. You know, he yes. could probably care less about where I have him ranked. But uh, yes, there's there's a couple coaches in the area that I think are uh, chomping at the bit. You know, Cody got through it one time, but they're both kind of or a couple times they're both chomping at the bit to get out of that sectional again. And you know, unfortunately, it's a pretty strong sectional. Where there's other sectionals, you look at man, you know. Yeah, it'd be nice to and, spread the wealth a little bit. Yep, and then last year, all four of the sectional representatives for the it was at, it was at Altamont, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I think all any four of those would have won that southernmost sectional that Meridian ended up winning, and it and it kind of showed in that super sectional because Tuscola mm -hmm. just wore them out early and often. Yep, uh, Meridian had a couple. Guards that were decent, but you could tell they were relying heavily on Gatewood. You know, speed and hitting some wide open threes, and you know that wasn't the case. Yeah, and this year is going to be more of the same. That that sectional in the Effingham area is going to be extremely tough. Tuscola, Casey Westfield, I have ranked there. They lost a tight one to Newton last night. Newton's pretty uh, good though. Yeah, and I and I have them ranked in two A, and they, you know, they're probably going to stay where they were last week. Uh, but the other team that should f fall into that Effingham area sectional would be Arcola, and I have them twenty five, and they haven't played a game yet because usually they're playing football late. Yeah, they're the... worried about football. Sure. Okay, yeah. so that'd be interesting. You could have the two colas, maybe a. St. Anthony and Aldemont in the section. I know there's some other people that will have something to say about that, but yeah, that's could be pretty four pretty good and salty representatives. I have not even seen. Have they released sites yet? They haven't, have they? No, that should happen second week of December. I see uh Champaign St. Thomas Moore in in your current top ten. Do they usually stay north when they get into the postseason? The last year they went to the Bloomington, they're, they're, they funneled through the Bloomington normal super sectional. I expect them to go that route again. Uh, 
I, I would be stunned if they got pushed into that Carbondale super. Gotcha. Yeah. I just didn't know because I mean, Tuscola champagne, not that far away, but sometimes that's, you know, it's just, well, uh, there's usually a hard line riding through there yep. and you know, sometimes it wavers, sometimes it doesn't. Yep. All right. Aaron, well, the, how about the problem, two? The, the problem with that is all of the, there's a lot of major players in Chicago and all those enrollments are dwindling rapidly. So you have all these Chicago schools that are dropping to one a, and then geographically it just starts pushing everything more South. And that's why you get Tuscola that travels further for a super sectional than they do for any other postseason game. Right. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. You're exactly right. Now you do have a handful of schools that will opt out and stay up a class, but that doesn't happen as much as it did a few years ago. No. And there was a late, change that i didn't catch until after the season started or is dropping down to 1a and you know just from a name that could scare a lot of people but luckily i've already seen them and they're they're not the same or team that we're used they're not to. your father's and, or are they no they're not they're not your older brother's or that's for sure right, right. <laughs> and that's just like chicago cordless when when coach jones left yep it, magically every right kid ended up in another school and yeah and then they got stuck in the the main division there in the public league and that wasn't good for them. So no. All right, two A. Let's talk two A. You had what? West Central? Illinois Bluffs, West Central, I think. Illinois Bluffs was one A. Uh two A ahead right. Rock Ridge. That's right, Rock Ridge. Yeah, they they went they went four and this week. They they won a couple tight games against some teams that will probably get into the rankings at some point this year. Manual is on their heels. Manual got third place in the Decatur uh, Thanksgiving tournament, and they played all big schools there. I mean, manually, manual could easily have been the number one team, and you could still make the case for them this week and, and probably any other week. But they're manual's a team to look out for because they're a, a young team, and they're going to be two A next year with these two with the two year en enrollments being locked in. Uh, so they're they could easily go back to back, and win which the is time. crazy to see Peoria Manual at two A. You know, you remember the days they dominated the two-class system, two-A basketball. Now they're, you know, by enrollment, they're there. Area-wise, I know we've got a pretty good, you know, representation for a wide scope. And I got to see. I had you up here somewhere. I'm I don't seeing know if I saved it. I'm seeing uh, Newton 23, T-Town 11, uh that's the last week, so this is going to change maybe a little bit uh, when your new ones come out. Lawrenceville in there at 15, too. That's fairly local to us and the team that, you know, we'd, we'd see yeah. our local guys run into uh, once the postseason starts. Yeah, and it's too bad that Olney's 3A. Otherwise, Olney would, would probably be a top 10 2A team. Uh, Olney's got to be right – they got to be right along the borderline, right? They're not They're not 3A by much, are they? Uh, they used to be, weren't they the smallest 3A school last year or two years ago? They were somewhere in there. Let me pull it up They here. were pretty close. I know Rob Flanagan would like kids to move out. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're, they're 709 enrollment, and the cutoff's like 698 or something, so they're not messing it by much. Right. No. And that's just tough because, you know, you, you look at an Effingham, yeah, they were a player, you know, you know, 79, 80, 81, you know, when you had the Arnolds and the Blobs and the Groupies and all those kids, but those guys aren't walking through the door anymore. And even when they've had some decent teams, it's hard to get even to a sectional final for them. So I. Well, it was unfortunate because the, 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 the shortened COVID year, Effingham had a really nice team. Yeah. yeah. Still don't know if they would have gotten through that sectional, but they would have had an opportunity to, to right. legitimately win a regional title. Yeah. No, they'd have been very competitive. Uh, but yeah, that and that's the thing. I mean, and then you always you would run into the Salem's, and you would, you know, some of those folks. Uh, Centr I mean, Centralia. I say you'd run into Centralia, and, and uh, you know, I know they they're down a notch from where they were. Um, but area schools. I mean, I think it's going to be interesting. I think um, in our area, I don't know that there's a dominant player. I know you mentioned we've mentioned. You know, Tatopoulos, Newton, Lawrenceville. I don't know that there's anyone head and shoulders. There's a lot, you know, I talked to Coach Behrman the other day. Um, there's just, there's so many unknowns on who's going to develop for these teams. You know, the same with Tatopoulos. I mean, they lost a ton of scoring off that group last mm -hmm. year. 
And, you know, I know scoring can be a question for them this year, but, you know, they're going to guard the crap out of you. It's just, can they create enough points to take the pressure off their defense of having to be perfect defensively and with their schedule, you know, they don't, there's, they don't have a lot of just, Hey, there's a W there's a W it's a tough schedule. Yeah. When they got out of the NTC, the, I mean, they were a powerhouse in that conference, but the strength of schedule went a completely different route once they were able to go independent and play whoever they wanted. Right. And, you know, I, for a couple of years there, when I was involved, we made a couple other changes on the schedule and it was always, you know, play anyone, anywhere, anytime. But people say, why don't we play X or Y? It was hard to find people within 30, 40 miles of here who was not already on the schedule who would play. I mean, when we had the bus crash going to play uh, Rock Ridge and Lincoln yeah. in a shootout, um, yeah, we had local school. AD wanted to put it on the schedule that year, and then Coach said, I really don't want to play feet down, and we ended up having to try to play Rock Ridge. So I, I was on my way to that game when I saw it on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, I was on my way to the bus crash. That game when I got a call and said, "Hey, our bus was in a ditch," and when I was driving ninety mile an hour across the uh, Finley Bruce Road, maybe a hundred, Whitey, it's debatable. Um, When I saw that bus laying sideways on the highway, I almost had to pull over and throw up. I'm not. I'm going to be honest. Um, Yeah. P Town played in the Capital Classic this week, and you know we've mentioned Lawrenceville. uh, You know we've mentioned Olney. Uh, already and those teams were both in the field of course I guess uh, you know at least at the top I don't know anything about the Vincennes team that T-Town played in the uh, in the third place game but it seems like it was a a pretty good field for them uh, in their first year back in that tournament yeah it was uh, and I'm glad to see that tournament get back to eight teams well Mount Carmel had to bail because of the football football. uh, had they been in it I mean that would have been a really nice field and I think once Mount Carmel shakes off the football legs, that they'll be, they'll be one, another one of those teams where you can just throw them in the hat of, you know, who could potentially win that sectional. Well, and that and that's the thing. You start looking at that sectional. You, I mean, you're going to have a T Town, you're going to have a Newton, you're going to have a Lawrenceville, and then there's a lot of other teams that are going to be plugged into the mix there. Um, I saw video. Um, the only game that he got had about a six point lead five point lead at about three minutes and just missed some shots and uh, maybe a quick shot or two a turnover and then all these game winner it was just a missed shot and it, I saw it and it just looked like some people went to try to block the shot instead of get on the glass and told me kid just you know got a put back point blank at the buzzer um Tough loss, but then I saw the end of their Vincennes game, and they were down five or six to Vincennes with about two or three minutes ago and came back and won that by four. So they kind of flipped the script on the last two or three minutes of the game. But good tournament, and then I saw where only beat Lawrenceville. It was a close one. Yeah, it was um, four. Yeah, four points. So, you know, um, yeah, good ball game. Yeah, the the uh, the, the thing that – that I wish I wish Lawrenceville had gotten back in the Effingham T Town tournament, uh, and you know they're, they're the the Christmas tournament that, that they're going to be in. They're going to win it. Uh, I just, Are they I in just Princeton? Worried. Are they in Princeton, Aaron? No, they're I think they're at the Tri County. Oh, they're at the Tri County, really? Well, see when Randy left, we still had them under, and then they their new coach didn't think they were going to be competitive, and that's kind of when they got out. Um, and then we were full. We really didn't have a spot to bring them back in. Now we're we're actually looking for two teams. I'm going to send a tweet out and have you retweet it um, for next year because we're going to have two openings. But um, because a lot of people, you know, like I said, like me, follow you on Twitter. That's you know, we can put it on the Illinois Athletic Directors thing. Hell, more coaches are going to see it on your Twitter account than they're going to see it. Yeah. And uh, by the way, using your spreadsheet, looking at that Tri County holiday tournament chrisman martinsville paris tri-county westville and windsor stew straws the other teams in that field and yeah it seems like if lawrenceville's if lawrenceville's 
you know, anything close to for real, it doesn't seem like there's. Yeah, they're good. They got a couple players back. They're pretty solid. I know they lost some kids to graduation. Um, but yeah, they were really, really good last year. I was very impressed with them in that sectional final against D Town last year. So, and, and, and also of interest to the area, uh, as far as your two way poll goes, right? Uh, your, your first poll had uh, Bree Central. Uh, F14, and they just finished winning the St. Anthony Thanksgiving tournament for the uh, third straight year. They uh, they they seemed they seemed solid that championship game. I watched the first half of it. I didn't stick around for the end of it. They were down three at halftime, and I think only scored like 18 points in the first half, but ended up mm-hmm. winning pretty comfortably. Uh, it was kind of a not a real uh, fun game to watch, I guess. But uh, but they. They got through it, and they're just perennially, perennially, perennially solid. Yeah, uh, coming out of last year, uh, you know, but by, by the end of March, I always have like just little markers for preseason rankings, and I had them, I had them like in the top ten, maybe had them in the top five, and then as as the uh, summer kept dragging on, I don't something about me just kept bumping them down, and they ended up at at fourteen, but they're going to be they're going to be top five by tomorrow morning, at least in my rankings. Yeah, well, Coach Schubert's son, Mason, I, and again, my schedule, I, by the time I, I didn't get to see them play at all here, I mean, but um, he's he's quite a player, and Jeremy's a heck of a coach. They, I have a lot of respect for their program. I mean, when I was on the bench at T-Town, Eagleson was on there, Stan was on there, but, you know, those were um, – Kind of like an inner squad game because we played in some biggies. We played in a couple sectional finals or sectionals and um, very, very uh, similar programs between Teutopolis and Breeze Central. Yeah, and I think I think Breeze Central and Newton will play at the Mount Vernon shootout. Yep, that's uh, what um, Troy was telling me. They got a chance. They had an opening, and Newton had something come up, and they reached out to him, and yeah, he's chomping at the bit to get a chance to play against Bree Central. So Troy looks at it the right way. He says, this is a great measuring stick for us. Yep. We can come out of this game saying, okay, guys, yeah, we think we're pretty good, but here's people you got to – if you're going to go somewhere in the postseason, here's people you're going to run into late in the year um, in the postseason, and, you know, you find out where you're at. So he's really yep. looking forward to that matchup. Yep, and then they're they're at your tournament again at the FNM T-Town. Uh, yep. So they'll they're going to have a nice strength of schedule from a nominal value, and then just looking at the schedule on paper, you'll be able to tell this is a pretty nice non conference schedule that they have. Right, and then I see also Seneca's in top. They're two A. I for some reason I thought they were one A. They're two A. They're two um, A. Yeah, and you had them. I think preseason like around twenty. Yeah, and they they got beat uh, last night in their own Thanksgiving championship game by one A Serena. Yeah, so so they probably won't be ranked tomorrow, but certainly have a chance to be ranked again. By right. Well, and they got coming local in or ties. coming out of your tournament. Right, and they got local ties. Uh, Mark Gerd's son is their main scorer, and he's a two straws, fame and fortune, we'll say. Um, so that's really why they were down here. They had a one year. They had one year they wanted to fulfill, and they're going to be pretty good. So it'll be a nice fit down here. Um, yeah, there is some local work out. What's that? I'm glad that was able to work out because I think yeah, they're they're building well. they're either finishing or building a new gym and then next year they go back up and host their own holiday tournament. Right. The Christmas tournament they were in said, Hey, when you get your new gym finished, we want to move it to there. And they said, Well, if you'll let us out a year, we'll do all that. So yeah, that worked out really well and that's good. Now, three A poll, there is some local flavor. I mean, extended local flavor. I saw I know Mount Zion. Uh, Centralia were both ranked. Um, yeah, and I close that out. I don't even have it in front of me, Whitey. I mean, Lincoln is in there. We, right. we, you and I don't have to think about Lincoln anymore, at least in terms of the Apollo Conference. But, uh, right. you know, they're still on the schedule for some of the common opponents that uh, Effingham has, at least. Sure. I saw yeah, Mount Zion, Mount Zion is a team that that's going to win a ton of games, and they they won that Lincoln. Thanksgiving tournament, they beat uh, East they beat Centennial, Centennial by yeah. by about twenty five. That game wasn't even close, right? Um, and they have a lot of size. They have some shooters. Uh, you know, like 
right now you could say they're a sleeper, but by the time postseason comes around, they could be looking like a a legitimate sectional contender. Oh, I, I saw... agree. With, I, why did you and I did that game last year, didn't we? Effingham mm-hmm. and Mount Zion? Uh, yeah, and – and I saw that Mount Zion, uh, they beat Lincoln 39-25 in that tournament. And I wondered if – that's just a – that's a classic, I think, Bob Alexander type of uh, – we're just going to shorten Neil the Alexander. game. Neil, yeah. Neil, Neil Alexander. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the official from around here named Bob Alexander. Neil Alexander, the coach at Lincoln, yeah. He can uh, – he'll – every once in a while, you'll see those Lincoln games, first team to 30 wins. Mm-hmm. Well, and – you and I did that Mount Zion FEM game last year, and FEM took them to the wire mm-hmm. because yeah. Mount Zion Mount Zion just kind of looked uninterested. But man, yeah. when they decided to play, they got they some got kids a, who can play. They got a lot of athletes on that team. That's that's for certain. And they were they were pretty young last year, so I don't imagine. Oh, the Anderson kids now sophomore. What is he? Six eight, six seven, something like that. Yeah, and he's good. I mean. Yeah. They're a team I'd like to see in your in your holiday tournament. You know, we've had brief conversations with them before. The problem is the Apollo the overlay. Yep. Yeah. And you know, and we we keep FEM Charleston Matt Toon away from each other. Uh at least, you know, first round, you know, they gotta earn the spot to play each other. We always, you know, we can't guarantee everything. And, you know, so there are some issues like that we've had to deal with, but um yeah, we knew this group was coming, I think, back in junior high. Um, mm. And we, we'd had some discussions, and there was some interest at one point. But, um, yeah, I mean, you throw them in the mix with, um, you know, in the last couple of years with the Lincoln Ways and the Oak Lawns, who were both, again, this year, really, really good. I think right. they were 7-0. They both won their holiday. Their holiday. But, yeah, both of those schools won their Thanksgiving tournaments. Lincoln Ways has a pair of young guards that, you'll be able to see in the next three years down there yes the bj Powell kid and it was kind of funny because i heard a lot about him through twitter and stuff last year and then he just he was a player last year he wasn't he never really you didn't notice him because they had the two big kids inside that were just two men you're gonna uh, notice him this year (laughs) yeah we're gonna notice him this year and i'll tell you what oak lawn had their best kid out last year the suleiman kid was got hurt and um and i know jason rhodes is ready to kind of get the monkey off his back and play for the championship here he just always seems to have that game in the semifinals or his second round game here where they miss 10 shots in a row or something but he's got some kids that can play too yeah it was unfortunate that uh, xavier suleiman got hurt last year because they were rolling early to beat mount carmel uh, yes, I was really looking forward to them, you know, potentially winning that tournament down there. I saw a lot of highlights of him, and I was very impressed with his ability. He's a high flyer. Oh, talked to him, talked to him quite a bit on the sidelines, obviously, since he was he was out. But um, yeah, pretty good. Um, so Aaron, once you update Monday, so are you weekly, or do you not get really weekly until after Christmas? Um, I'm weekly the entire season. Okay. For some reason, I thought between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you did it every other week or something. Okay. So that's even better. That's, um, and like I said, you put in the time. It's not like, you know, you know, I, you know, Michael O'Brien, you know, his top 25, he does in the Chicago land, you know, pretty close you know, for what you're doing as well. Um, You know, people who follow basketball know to use your website and your rankings. And again, your rankings, um, you know, they get cited more often than really anybody. There's no doubt about that. There's two ways to look at it. If I spend this much time and I I miss on a team that much, it makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes I don't, but other, other times I just get lucky. So it's, it's, no. it's something that I've always enjoyed doing. Uh, and if I didn't have the website, I'd still be doing it. I mean, I did it for years without the website, and I'm just glad that I was able to get it out. And people that want to look at it, they can look at it. And I like, I love the social media interaction with people. People say that I'm an idiot. That's fine. You know, I'm not going to chirp back at you. You can say whatever you want, and we'll just keep moving forward. 
I usually hear that not on social media. Aaron. I'll just <laughs> people. I'll just be in the grocery store and say, "Man, you're an idiot." Um, but um, do you, you know. uh, do you are you able to, or do you bother doing it? I mean, do you, is there any way for you to to track how often the spreadsheet is downloaded? Uh, you know, on a weekly basis. Uh, no, I've I've talked to my webmaster about that. Uh, I think he would be able to track visits to the site, but he's not able to, to find a way uh, to track downloads. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it would, I'd be curious to how many times it's, it's being downloaded. I I don't know if it would be five to ten times a day or more than that. Or you know, I download it usually once or twice a day just as a personal backup. So sure. so when the thing crashes, I mean, I've had been lucky the last two seasons. I haven't had any issues, but. I think Mike tried to download it a couple of years ago and like, Hey, something's going on. Yeah. I was like, come and on. I, lo- I logged in. into it and I was like ready to jump off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. But like within 10 minutes, all of a sudden it started working again. So, cause I oh, remember yeah, but, I was like, Hey, what's wrong with your website? Yeah. It's, it's not a good feeling when that happens, but I've been lucky the last few years now. And I'm also going to give a shout out to Aaron because I have reached out to him before when we've had teams interested in our Christmas tournament. And I say, hey, are they a fit? Are they going to be competitive? And he'll say yes, or he'll say, yeah, probably not so much. So he is a very good source, and I do use him, and I'm not afraid to tell my committee when we use him. So, you know, it's a good good deal. Now, I do want to ask you something, and I got you on air, see, so I have evidence of your answer eventually. Oh. <laughs> I would like to a couple other times during the season, maybe have you on for five or 10 minutes, you know, after we have our guests just to talk about your updated rankings. Cause I know just the viewership of the 18 people that watch this podcast, this is going to blow up for you. And you're gonna be... <laughs> people in Clay yeah. County will start at knowing who you are. Yeah, that's fine. Like as long as we can get the timing, right. I'd be glad to be on as, as much as you guys can stand, listen to me. Yeah, well, that's not a problem. Yeah, no, that's uh, that'd be great, and, and well, especially because also- people want to know where where people are in the rankings, and and your input, you know, like you said, hey, I'm moving these guys up, these guys down. Here's why. That's valuable information. Yep. Try to be as transparent as I possibly can be. And uh, also, folks, if uh, you know, you go to nestohoops.com and you uh, and you get onto Aaron's site and you see the spreadsheet button that you can click to download it. There's a PayPal button right underneath there. And hey, listen, if you want to show him your appreciation, he's he's uh, it's right there for you. And 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 why not? Because uh, it's a it's a wonderful resource. Um, and uh, a lot of work goes into it. I mean, I try to keep I try to keep tabs on just three conferences in our area and uh it's it's a lot of time so so he i know what i know what he's doing of course he got a good network and i'm sure the twitter mentions uh start really blowing up this week of the year don't they yep they do and that's that's the one that's one of the uh the big values of social media and twitter is the more followers you get you know it's not just well i got this many followers it's you have this many followers that have the op- they have the opportunity to give you information yeah, I saw tonight you asked for scores from a tournament, and it wasn't long. You got replies, all the scores. Yep. And that's at Nesto Hoops, by the way, on Twitter. Uh, X, I guess, but I'm not calling it that. It is Twitter. I, you, yeah, I, 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 I still call it Twitter. It still takes you there. So that's that's all all I need to know. So, yep. so Mike, anything else you want to – I know we, we promised nope. Aaron. We promised him 30 back. minutes. He's got his kids to bed, you know, so I'm what we're gonna let him go, but I will uh be in contact with you on uh maybe in a couple of weeks getting you on again for just five or ten minutes, just quickly updating primarily one and two way, touch on stuff like that, because again, that's very valuable. Yeah, we can make that happen and then I'll start working on some of those vacancies that you have for the tournament for next year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I I'm gonna send you one, I'm gonna text you on one. We've got I got one team wanting in and I just, I've done a little looking at their stuff. I mean, like I said, we're needing two spots and it's, uh, we just found out we needed two for next year. So we'll have to see. All right. All well, right. Thank you, Aaron. Hey, you have a good night. And, um, you know, I know now it's your slow season until Christmas tournament. You don't have hardly anything going on. So. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. 
<laughs> shoot me a text whenever. <laughs> see you, man. I'll talk to you. All right. Yeah, see you, Mike. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Aaron. We'll let uh, we'll let Aaron Britton again. That's at Nesto Hoops on Twitter and uh, NestoHoops.com. Uh, you can check him out. Uh, we'll let him bail out on the call, and then Mike, you and I are going to. Uh, we got lots of local uh, teams to talk about. Lots of local Thanksgiving tournaments. Um, I, you know, I was, I was running around online trying to find all tournament teams from some of the local, uh, local involvement. And I, I couldn't track a lot down, unfortunately, but, uh, but, uh, go to know, Aaron's website, man. You go to that spreadsheet. It's all right there. He's got the all tournament teams on there. Oh, not all tournament teams. No. Yeah, no, that's what I'm talking I'm about. I'm sorry. I want to, you just... said you were looking for some scores. No, no, I got yeah, no, the scores. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm telling you, you get that spreadsheet, and it's it's got everything. And 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 these tournaments ended last night, and you get on there and look at his spreadsheet now, and he's got it all updated. It's all there. Oh, and here's the thing: I click on Effingham Christmas tournament, okay, in our brackets, obviously with no teams listed, but here's the list of the teams alphabetically, every team's record. I click on Newton and their page comes up and there's their schedule with yeah. every result. I mean, it's a like the world's most cross reference spreadsheet where you enter this score, it populates everywhere. Yeah. Because he's got them by conference, <clears throat> one eight, he's got them by class. So I don't really have a great plan about where to start. Um, I don't care. You pick your poison. I mean, and, and again, like as far as let's just uh, start with the St. Anthony tournament. They were first yeah, out of the box. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can speak the most intelligently about that one. I did seven of those games on the radio this week, uh, and uh, we we mentioned it when we were talking to Aaron. But it was Breeze Central ultimately uh, winning the thing. Uh, they, you know, they, I I left at halftime, and and uh, Champagne Central or uh, rather Belleville East was ahead by three points at halftime and Belleville East um, Matt and I talked about it a lot when we saw their games and then, you know, just to, not just when we're broadcasting them, but uh, on our own time between games, the defense that Belleville East played was just uh, stifling at times really. Well, and, and, and I just thought that it was a low scoring game at halftime. East was ahead by three points. I think it was. I just kind of figured they were going to win an ugly one. That's kind of how I left it. And then I, you know, come to find out that uh, Central, Breeze Central, won 44 to 30. So they must have, I mean, Belt. Uh, Belleville. Down second half when you're trailing at the half, win by 14. Yeah, I mean, and, and they must have held uh, Belleville East to, I mean, like 9, 10 points. In well, the and half. I saw Belleville East play twice, part of two games. I saw most of the – I may have seen all their Effingham or all their St. Anthony game and part of the Effingham game. Um, and both teams were playing. I mean, Effingham plays more 3 2, 1 2 2 zone. I mean, St. Anthony's in it was falling back into man. Mm -hmm. um, East hit a lot of threes, I felt like. They got a lot of open looks, which was, I mean, you know, but they shot the three ball, I thought, pretty well. And I can just see, you know, maybe in that game against, um, Central, maybe they hit a little dry spell, missed a couple shots uh, from the three ball. And Central may have just said, hey, we're going to play you more man. Who knows? But um, um, East, East, the thing about East, and, and in my opinion, the thing that will help St. Anthony from that game, I don't yeah. think they will play a team that quick defensively the rest of the season. Yeah, and just to kind of run it down for both of our local teams, just so that everybody knows how they did. St. Anthony uh got they they lost the third place game to Champaign Central. That uh that uh final was um two point game, wasn't it? 53 51 in overtime. Uh okay. I didn't know it was overtime. St. Anthony had a seven point lead on a couple different occasions in the second half, but couldn't couldn't pull away any further, and Central ended up coming back and getting the win. So St. Anthony lost that one. Uh, they beat Effingham on Friday night, uh, 61-43. Belleville East got them 58-44 uh, on Wednesday, and they had opened up with Rantoul on Monday and beaten them 
73-43 for for Effingham um they started against Belleville East on Tuesday uh lost 71-35 which is a little deceiving because uh that game was extremely tight in the first quarter and then uh East just sort of kind of methodically pulled away they had about a 9-10 point lead at halftime and then just just kept pulling away late uh Effingham lost to Rantoul 63-51 on Wednesday lost to St. Anthony, which we already mentioned, 61-43 on Friday, but they did beat Robinson 56 to 48 on Saturday in the seventh place game. And and listen, uh I was really that was a fun game for Effingham. Uh they got out of the gate extremely fast. They, yeah, they were up 14. I was listening to you guys on the radio. They were up 14 early. Yeah, they beat uh they they beat uh, they they were uh they were ahead. Let me see here. 21-7 uh, quarter, wasn't 20, it? 25 to 8 after the first okay. quarter. And uh so yeah, I was I was saying that they led by as many as 14 in the first half. It was actually by as many as 17 because they were okay. up the no wait a minute. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong, I'm looking at the wrong one. 21 7. Yeah, 21 well, hey, somebody said 21 7. Yeah, I was looking at uh was looking at something. But didn't else. Robinson come back and take lead in the fourth quarter? He briefly? did they had two point two point lead in the fourth quarter. Okay. Um, Robinson, yeah, they had, uh, I mean, by all rights, uh, just in terms of pure athleticism and length, like they had a lot of advantages on Effingham in that game, but the heart shot extremely well in the, uh, in the opening quarter, they got, uh, they got five, three pointers, uh, KJ Kellums hit a couple Spencer Fox hit a couple, which that's not something Spencer usually even attempts to do. But Didn't he, last year, but he he shoots with confidence this year. I mean, that's the one thing I noticed. And, you know, I did not realize how athletic he was. Spencer's yeah, he, got some hops. He does. He does. I mean, you know, he's uh, – and, and he's he's got to be the anchor of that team, not necessarily from a scoring standpoint, but just from a – from He's the lone you know, senior. Yeah, I mean, the leadership, right? And, and I think so sure. far – Effingham, listen, they went one and three in the tournament. You could look at that and say, eh, well, you know, that's that's not great. But but uh, that would not uh, that would show me that you didn't ra- really watch the games because um, the effort level was incredibly impressive. They came out and gave it their best uh, and and improved from day one to day five of the tournament, which is what some I talked to Obi about uh, when when. Uh, Whenever I interviewed him after the uh, Robinson game, I was like, well, you know, you, you talked about you got one good quarter out of them in the first game and you got a pretty good half out of them in the second game and you just want to keep building on it. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that the Robinson game was a complete game because they got a little slow with the scoring in the middle two quarters. But uh, but, you know, they they showed a lot in finishing it and um Cannon Bockhorn scored 25 points against Robinson, you know, scored 17 against St. Anthony. I think there's a kid that, uh, you know, that's somebody that uh, is starting to emerge as a confident scorer. Uh, yeah, he can sh- – I mean, he can shoot it, but he, he also is able to kind of get to the hole and do things. I talked to his dad briefly after the St. Anthony game as we were leaving. I said, you know, he just can't get – down um i mean now in my opinion he's option number one for them he's their he's probably the one person who can go out and get you double figure points every night night in night out i really feel that um he had eight points at half or after three quarters of this game by the way so he scored 17 in the fourth quarter yeah. and hit some big free throws hit some big three well and that was a crunch time game that was i mean yeah. that's a game where they came back got behind late and well, came back so and, that you know it's not like hey we were up or down 30 and, and you listen, scored a lot of points no it was crunch time and listen the emotion of it like yeah it's a seventh place game you're playing three o'clock in the afternoon but they the want win. that one bad they want that one bad you know they do yeah and, and it means a lot to them to get that win and and uh so listen the pressures the pressures you're still feeling it right you're still feeling it and and they came through they they closed out that game with a 21 point fourth quarter and uh you know i was extremely happy for them it was fun it's fun and and really watching obi on the sideline uh this week like 
a lot of energy there too, you know, a lot of good positive energy. Uh, I know he was under the weather the last couple of days specifically, like not feeling well at all. But, uh, but you know, uh, I, and, and I think that that, uh, that's, that's important too, because right. It's a young team. They need all the positive reinforcement they can get. And, and listen, with the, the with, with the Apollo being what it is and with your Mount Zions in there and, and, you know, there's, there's some other pretty solid teams on the schedule. Like it's, you know, there's, there's not, there's going to be a lot of challenges on the schedule this year for Effingham, but uh, if they, yeah, I mean, Mahomes lost a couple games early. I saw that yeah. just because they played some teams in our tournament. Uh-huh. Um, Matt Toon, you saw them in the tournament. Um, Matt Toon is, Matt Toon is, let me tell you this, Matt Toon is better, better than they were last year. They shoot. I agree with that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, there were, you know, they, they ended up uh, winning the, uh, they ended up winning the fifth place game over Rantoul. Uh, they, they're, you know, they're going to be a tough team to deal with. I don't know that they're going to like win 15 or 20 games this year necessarily, but they're, they're not going to be a pushover by any means. Right. It sounds like Charleston's got some more kids out, some kids out this year who haven't been out in the past. Plus, they got the Rudy Ball kid. Yeah. Well, Rudy or is he eligible? I, I have, I can, all I can tell you is that, uh, a, person who calls the Charleston games on the radio got in touch with me and wanted to get Adam's uh, statistics with St. Anthony from last year. And I said, well, you know, he didn't play very much. He had an injury, you know, he, right. he his shoulder injury. was just, his shoulder was just too messed up for him to play very much. So I, here's his stats, but they don't really mean much because he just couldn't get on the floor much. He played, he did play for them a little bit during the Christmas tournament last year right? That's about it. So um yeah uh so yeah i was really i was really happy for for effingham to get that win for saint anthony you know um they go two and two in this tournament and probably feel like they let one get away against champagne central but i will tell you that the champagne central was a champagne central and belleville east the two teams that the, that the bulldogs lost to were long uh physical defenders and uh, the kind of team that St. Anthony's not going to run into in the 1A portion of their schedule very often. And so those are losses that, yeah, you like you don't you never want to lose a game, but those are games that are still going to make you better in the long run. I think it, uh, you know, it showed some of these St. Anthony guards that haven't necessarily had to handle the ball that much in the past. Like maybe they've they've played on the varsity floor, but they haven't had to be primary ball handlers. Right. Uh, it, it was a little trial by fire for those guys. And they didn't always, they didn't always shine, but they got the experience. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the thing, handling the ball, especially in that East game, you know, Brock Faraday did a lot of bringing the ball up the floor in that game. Again, they were without Ryan Schmidt. I mean, we touched on it briefly with Aaron. You know, and I, somebody said, oh, well, they got beat by 14. Ryan's going to get that. Well, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not how um, it works. Not necessarily. Um, but, yeah, you're missing a key component um, in that game. Yeah, but, uh, and they didn't have Max Koenig in, in that uh, Belleville East game either. Uh, so that's two starters you're down. I will I will say, you know, that uh, – one of the one of the nice little storylines from this tournament was that uh you know uh, Brady Hatton got a chance to start uh, for St. Anthony uh with Ryan Schmidt out and listen Brady's not going to score the way Ryan Schmidt can okay that's just i mean Brady has had injury issues himself that have kept him from being able to develop as much as a junior with his uh frame and athleticism might have in other situations but uh but he's been able to get out there and he had a big impact in that champagne central game, hit some pretty big buckets down the stretch uh, in the fourth quarter. And and he he'll block you a shot or two a game. He gets, he he'll get you some rebounds. Like I thought it was a, it was a nice little coming out party. For he's him. a sophomore or junior. I think he's junior, right? Yeah. He's uh, I, I did not remember. He's um. I, w- I don't want to be wrong. I I don't want to say it wrong, but uh, yeah, he's a junior, six four okay. junior. So uh, yeah, and then you know uh, Schmidt. The word on Schmidt was that you know, like let's say it was a regional championship last night. 
they might have they might have found a way to get him on the floor like with the ankle you know it's not like it's not like he absolutely was a no go it's just that it's the first week of the season and there's not a lot of incentive to push a kid at this point well you know he's a golfer tough kid <laughs> i mean he scored 21 points in that first game against yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and he's um he had that ability last year off the bench to just have huge games. And he occasionally mm-hmm. did, but uh, he extremely small sample size. Uh, right. And that's the thing for this injury that starting role. You need to see him do it seven, eight games in a row being, you know, 12 to 20 points a game, just by doing what he's doing and scoring's not everything. I don't mean it that way because he no. does a lot of, he's good on the glass. He can defend. I mean, there's a lot of things Ryan brings to the table. Um, but again, he's not done it for, for a long period of time where we have to see that. Yeah. I, he will, but it's just, you can't, then you can say it's not a small sample size. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously Brock Fierday had a good tournament. He was on the all tournament team. Colin Westendorf on the all tournament team. Yeah. Uh, Brock, the thing I noticed about Brock and seeing him this week is that uh, he he's he uh, he's filled out some. Okay, mm-hmm. I mean, so is Koenig for that matter. But uh, Brock, I didn't even. I mean, like he he just looks so much different out there to me. Yeah, like, he does. He, he's gotten. He's gotten a little thicker, and that's good. And, you know, he – it seemed like every time he got a nice look from 15 feet, he knocked it down. Well, and that's the thing. He'll score in a lot of ways. He can hit the right. three. He hit a big three-pointer against Champaign Central. I don't know how they let him get so open, but he hit it to tie uh, in in crunch time of that game. But he'll – you know, he can get to the rim, right? He'll he'll bank one in from 12 feet. He hit that leaner, you know, he'll take right. a little contact. He'll pull up from the free throw line. Uh he'll he'll just he can score any way he wants to. And he's gonna, I mean, they're gonna need him to 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 be that leader. Uh I think Colin Westendorf has shown um he's shown the willingness like so far. Uh yeah. You know the to, to well. That's the thing. You got three kids. Option. Those three kids can score twenty points every night, and then it's just you know, you just can't have them all three to have that night where they can't throw in the ocean because I mean they got a lot of kids who can, but you need that. And defensively, they're pretty sound. I mean, I sure. like oh, their traps are. pretty good. I think it's going to give a lot of people fits because of their length, uh-huh. and they have some athleticism. So I think yeah. you know yeah. it's going to see. We'll see. You know, Aaron's got him fourth or fifth in his poll for a reason. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, um, they're, gonna, they're in the national trail this year. You know, I just think that you know they're 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 going to be the team to beat. I don't think that's right. uh, you know I don't think that's really. I just think they've got more weapons than Aldemont this year. Yeah, Aldemont. But we'll see. Aldemont's got a lot of seniors on the team. The problem for them is just that you know they had a lot of seniors on the team last year, so right. So you so got a lot of kids of who are, had some experience, but not a lot of experience. And then and then you look at some of the other teams that uh, were toward the top of the conference last year. You know they they uh, they lost quite a bit to graduation. Now right. I do think that uh, there's some other schools. You know St. Elmo Brownstown they they won that uh, Mulberry Grove tournament. You know undefeated and. And you know Mulberry Grove is not St. Anthony tournament, but uh, but uh, hey, listen, you're four four and zero and four and zero, uh, and they they they've got a lot of guys back, so it, yeah. they should be solid. Dieterich uh, Dieterich had a good showing over at the Cumberland tournament. They uh, got third place. They beat Vandalia in the third place game, and obviously Dieterich had a nice transfer come in, um, and uh, they. Uh, They've got some athletes on there, and they've they've got pretty a lot of their top pieces back. So, you know, some NTC schools had some uh, some pretty good showings in in the yeah. early going. Um, T Town's boys ended up third at that Capital Classic, yeah, two and two, Classic. lost the tough one. I, and I saw bits and pieces of that only game. Um, beat Salem pretty handily. Three, I think they were up right? like thirty two seventeen at the half or something. Had a fifteen yeah, point they, halftime lead. They 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 went three and one because they they smoked uh, they smoked Salem they lost to Olney they beat uh, Red Hill 
uh, by 60. 60 points. Held them to held them under 20. 79 uh, to 19. Yeah, and then um, and then uh, came back to beat Vincennes in the third place game. And the thing yeah. that's impressive about that is they were down 10 points in the fourth quarter. And uh, came I just saw I probably picked it up about oh down five with about three minutes to go, and they just they did a nice job down the stretch. They really did. They yeah. were very efficient. And, and two and, kids make the all tournament team. Uh, yeah, I I couldn't find that. So how, yeah. you you're more well connected than I am. So do you, do you, do you know? But who uh, Garrett Gaddis and Joey Nieberg, you both made all tournament. Good. I saw it on Facebook. Good. Um, That's where I was watching it because uh, Nene Gaddis was streaming it, so nice. I was able well, to watch it there. You know the thing with the thing with T Town that we talked about preseason was that they obviously a lot of scoring and a lot of leadership graduated off that team. And the leadership is the thing that when I see them make up a 10 point deficit in the fourth quarter and get a win in that third place game, that shows me that there's still some good mindset in there, right? There's still some kids that are ready to take, they're ready to take the mantle. They're ready to, to, to lead this team. I think that's uh that's a po- knowing nothing else about how the game went down. That's a positive that uh, that jumps off the page at you. Well, defensively, I mean, you know, Gaddis plays with a chip on his shoulder. He guards. Mitch Custer's quick. He guards. Zach Niebergy, um came off the bench and was guarding. Um, Niebergy did a good job inside. I think Tyler Prummer and um, – oh, loss. Gosh, now I can't remember Tanner's son's name. Um, it saved my life, but um, yeah, he was. But he, you know, that's the thing, they're still guarding and well, they will continue to guard. It's just again, I think the biggest thing is if they're going to get um enough points, Logan lost. I'm sorry. Um, they just have to find a way to score enough points because they, they play people that can score a lot. Um, so th- that's going to be the key to their season. Um, but, yeah, their defense, they get out and guard. And they were playing a little one two, two must be the flavor of the day. Yeah, um, St. Anthony showed a little bit of that in the half court too. Um, I remember last year that Christ Our Rock Lutheran team that St. Anthony beat in the regional championship, they played it almost exclusively. And they were – they were a long team, you know, uh, they kind of had the physical attributes that just make it an effective thing. But uh, yeah, if you like, were, in, if unless you had athletes who could match up and you and I talked right. about it off the air more during the broadcast, you know, I had my telestrator and I said, why, here's the areas they're really susceptible to. And finally, in the second half, St. Anthony started to exploit those areas. Yeah. And um, they but, were just not able to you, overcome it. You do see more teams though willing to to play it. I mean, and St. Anthony didn't play it all the time. They just no. they went to it time and again. I mean, it's they're obviously going to play man most of the time. I mean, any coach well, they'll play it and then they'll play it and fall back into man, which is not hard if you're communicating. Um, FEM's playing it; they're dropping more into a three-two. I think that's as much to do with the fact that FEM doesn't have a lot of size. They just don't. They just don't. You know, they there's yeah. and they can't control that, but. Uh, I think there's a couple of things that, and and we'll see as the season wears on, you know, how that continues to work out. But a lot of teams, at least in the beginning of the games have, I think been uncomfortable going against it because it's just not, it's not something you see very often. Well, and and you're seeing more and more of it. And I guess the thing when I watch, you know, because I don't, I don't really watch the ball. I know that's hard to believe. (laughs) <laughs> but I just see a lot of schematic things. Um, approaches that I'm not a fan of, how teams approach that type of a zone. And I've had conversations with other coaches when we talk about it. But I just feel sometimes the keep it simple, stupid, the old kiss method is really, really good. And when they were playing the other night, yeah, I was telling Steve Raymond, okay, this spot's open every time. They just – sometimes they leave it to cut and they wait on someone to get there. And So, yeah, it's just – you know, I think it, it, it's a, it's just 
taking the simplicity out of the game sometimes. So just to keep on rolling, because we've still got uh, a few more local things to talk about here. Uh, um, Effingham's girls, uh, they went over to Newton and won the Bob Curran's uh, round. Ran the table over there. Yeah, they beat Altamont and uh, beat Newton by 10 each. And those are, listen, those are good wins. Uh, Altamont's Altamont's a good girls team. They're going to win a ton of basketball games this year. Mm -hmm. And Newton is uh, Newton is off to a great start. Uh, yep. I I you mentioned Steve Raymond. He was at that game. I talked to him a little bit uh, over at St. Anthony later on in the day, and that was on that was on Friday when they played Newton and beat them fifty six forty six. He said Effingham was down uh, in the second half, maybe even in the fourth quarter, and uh, went to a press and uh, turned the game around from that point on and got the win. I don't have point totals from that, but, uh, you know, I could tell you that uh, you look at what Effingham has done so far, including in the first two games of that tournament, beating Altamont and Flora, um, it's a couple of sophomores, Alyssa Martin and Avery Wolf, that have done most of the scoring. Yeah. This team. Both coming off the bench, contributing as freshmen. And, uh, and that's – Effingham, you, you look at uh, – the scoring there. I mean, they don't, they've got a couple of seniors on this team, but for the most part, like this is uh this is a group that's going to be together for a couple of years and they're already off to a, they're already off to a five and O start. And is Donaldson uh, girl, also a sophomore. Donaldson's a junior. She's uh, a junior. Okay. Donaldson, her, and Beals are ju her and Beals are juniors, correct? Yeah. Beals, Altoff, uh, Donaldson, Bella Austin, the girl from Vandalia that tra right, they're all juniors. They're all juniors. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they uh, they and there's a there's just a lot there that's uh, going to be there for yeah. two or three more years. Uh, well, and Jeff's always going to be aggressive offensively. His his group groups have liked to shoot the three, um, and they've been pretty good at it. So yeah, you know, and it was good to see them. So they're five. Are they five and zero or four? Now? Five and zero. Oh, they uh, they, they, okay. they beat Robinson and Diederich before this tournament, and then in the tournament they beat Altamont, Flora, and Newton. Um, Altamont in that tournament, by the way, um, they lost. Uh, they lost to Effingham. They lost to Newton by twelve. Uh, they did beat Flora, but uh, they did uh, they did manage to get. Uh, they got Grace Nelson on the all tournament team. Uh, Wolf and Martin got on there as well as Bella Austin from Effingham. And then Cameron Martin and Lily Kessler from uh, Newton got on there. And, and, you know, I know we don't talk about Newton as much just, you know, for whatever reason, but uh, I've heard that the Kessler girl has uh, she's a post player and that she has really, uh, she's really upped her game this year. Newton's got pretty much everybody back from their team last year. And they were, they, they had a, you know, they didn't win a ton of games last year, but uh, they're, that's one to keep an eye on Newton girls and their boys are going to be, the boys are going to win a lot of games this year, I think. So yeah, I think they will. Um, yeah. And then St. Uh, Anthony's at the Robinson tournament, correct? Yep, St. Anthony girls went to the Robinson tournament, and there's some good competition there. They went three and one. Uh, they beat Mount Carmel 62-58, uh, beat Marshall by 30. Uh, Robinson got them by two, 57-55. And then they turned around and doubled up Fairfield 66-33. So that's four games in two days. Um, I don't have any scoring information yet because those games all happened, you know, over the, right. over the weekend. So I haven't seen any scoring information. I do know that Stacy Vonderheide and Nancy Ruhal got on the all tournament team. They announced that uh, in the gym at St. Anthony and that's no surprise. They've been their leading scorers sure. uh, so far. And uh, you know, that's, that's going to be how it goes. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of solid players on that St. Anthony team, but it's going to, it's going to go through Vonderheide and Ruhal for the most part. Uh, they're going to, they're, yeah, they're going to be your main scores, main scoring options yeah. generally. Yeah. And, and listen, uh, St. Anthony, I mean, they're, they're off to a five and one start and they're going to win a lot of games too, you know, mm -hmm. St. Anthony and Altamont play a week from tomorrow. And right. we're putting that one on, uh, I imagine we're going to, yeah, we're broadcasting. Yeah, that. I heard I heard you guys talking about it. And yeah. uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, that's, I told Matt, it. yeah, I told Matt when we were talking about that, like, I look forward to every game that we broadcast, but uh, some of them you circle 
And um, really look forward to the ones that you and I work together. That's when you get excited. Yeah, I think gonna be you and I at T Town at the Christmas tournament this year. So everybody buckle in for that. Uh yeah. Um let's see. T Town, I don't think I wish I could talk, week off. I wish I could talk more about you know what any St. Anthony players did in that Robinson tournament. I just don't don't have that information in my fingertips. I can't right, tell well, you. we'll see. Millie, I'll have scores on the Oh, she will. She's going to be she's going to be typing a lot uh, tomorrow morning. Yep, uh, yep. They need to dice her hands. Also, uh, just some of the other. We don't have to really dissect these, but just so I pass the information along. Uh, Dieter girls uh, ran the table at the uh, at the CHBC Thanksgiving tournament. They won that last year as well, uh, and they they beat Windsor Stu Straws in the championship game. Uh, those are, you know, Diederich's won four games in a row. Windsor Stu Straws, we talked about their freshman, uh, uh, Kendra Hayes, uh, being a good player. Windsor Stu Straws is off to a good start to the season. They make it to the championship game of that tournament. So there's a couple of your NTC girls teams that, uh, you know, really the NTC girls conference, it's Altamont and St. Anthony are going to be like, you know, kind of the, the teams to beat there, but, uh, you know, you look at Diederich winning. You look at uh, you look at Windsor Stu Straws being improved from last year. I think uh, I think that uh, Brownstown is going to be pretty good. Uh, they got third place in that tournament. There's going to be some interesting. Didn't South shouldn't, um, either South Central or North play one of them be decent? Um, North North North. I was just thinking because of volleyball. I thought there was a lot of carryover from volleyball kids. North, North Clay's off to a three and three start. They only, uh, they only, Windsor Stu Straws beat them by nine during that tournament. Uh, but B- Brownstown got them by 14 in the third place game. Um, so, you know, they've got some interesting players. I know that, uh, I know that the Ballard girl who is a senior, Maya Ballard uh, for North Clay, she's getting looked at by some people. I know for a fact that there was, you know, that uh, local college coach was, uh, on hand to see her play uh at one of the games uh i guess friday um so you know she's she's a good player uh i don't know how many i don't know how many how they'll stack up in the ntc i think they'll be in the middle somewhere but i've i've been wrong once or twice uh, not not often but uh but that's kind of how i'm seeing it early on anyway so um boy i i'm I'm probably leaving something out. I know Windsor Stu Straws boys went up to that Cerro Gordo tournament that they always play in. They they won a couple, lost a couple. Uh, they got a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of scoring gaps to fill from last year, so it'll be interesting to see how they pan out. But uh, yeah. but really, you know, I think we've 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 we're we've, off. We've we've the touched on the is off. We're off and running. That's the thing. It's 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 hard because there's so many games this first week that you're right. It's it's impossible to to really hit on everything and do it all justice. But uh, oh, um, I saw you know local local interest here. Uh, uh, coach Toller, uh, who has been at T Town on their bench, he's the head coach at Sullivan this year, and I got a chance to see his team play. I was keeping the book for a couple of games at the Mary Sir tournament in Yoga on Friday, and uh, got to see his team. Uh, get a win over Sisney, which by the way, Sisney's a really good little one, a team. Uh, they're going to, they're going to win a lot of ball games this year, but, uh, but Sullivan was, uh, they were fun to watch. They really, uh, really got after it. Boy, he's uh Craig's a, uh, he's a, he's an energetic coach. Okay. He's uh, he's up and down that sideline. And it seems like his boys respond uh, to that pretty well. They, they were really getting after it. They, uh, I know they also beat Nyoga by about five points uh, the next day. Nyoga got a win over that Sisney team. Nyoga's got a couple of wins on the early seasons. That's that's fun to see. And uh, Nyoga's girls got a couple of wins in that tournament as well. But uh, but uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I was uh, I had fun watching that Sullivan team play. It was. Uh, I'm just happy we have the Mary Sir tournament. <laughs> yeah, Mary Sir, it's uh, you know I I didn't think to do it, but. Uh, her 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 catchphrase was uh, of course uh, let's have a great game and <clears throat> let's have a great game folks and uh, I had to do the starting lineups whenever I was keeping the book on those games and I I didn't have the presence of mind to throw it in there but I should have I should did, have did, did you bring candy no actually 
I didn't I I didn't bring candy, but one of the officials came by the scorer's bench uh before the game and handed us all handed us all a uh, lifesaver uh mint, which I don't know if he's trying to tell us something, you know, but uh Mary always had candy. At the I know she did. I know she did. Uh I, listen, I'm not trying I'm not trying to to it would be impossible to do the job as well as she does or did. Yes. So so Mary uh, was very good. So uh, a very just, good person. Uh, just a uh, and if you'd see her out in public, you would not say, "Hey, that's one of the better table runners and official scores in Central Illinois." She did the job, didn't yes, she? she? Did she was good at it, and and uh, and uh, she's she's missed all the time. But yeah, it's nice that they had that tournament, and it's uh, you know, it's uh, Effingham's junior varsity had to fill it uh, fill in on the girls' side of that one. Um, so uh, I actually had that game too. They were playing against Arthur Christian, I think, and and they held their own. They ended up getting beat uh, in that game, but uh, uh, Aaron Widges he was coaching them, and then he had to hightail it over to Newton to. to well, get... that's probably more of a fresh soft team because I'm sure yeah. Jeff's got. Yeah, now he had quite a few juniors on there. That's the thing is they've just got a they got a pretty big junior class. There's just oh, okay. those deals where there's just. There's just not a varsity minutes for everybody, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah, we talked about that last week. We did, and but, and and and, and uh, you know, it is what it is, right? Like uh, you just got to yeah. play hard, do your best, and and you never know when the opportunity might arise. And and also just because just because the first week or two of the season you're not happy with where you're at, like it's a long year. You know, four games is a small sample size, Whitey. People people play their way <laughs> into and out of roles. Matchups might dictate that you play in some more games later on in the year, or somebody might get hurt. You know, uh, multiple people might get hurt. You never know. Like, and plus, again, contributions to the team don't just happen on the floor and during the thirty-two minutes of any given game. In nope. Fact, some of the biggest contributions happen when you're getting ready for those 32 minutes. What you do in practice, how you are as a teammate on the bench. Uh, there's a lot of things. And then that's, it's unfortunate. Sometimes I think kids get, well, I'm not scoring or I didn't get my minutes here. You know, I'm done. Boy, you're going to miss it. Um, but whatever it is, it is. You're going to miss it. I mean, you know, you could. That's the way it is. I I would, if I had it to do over again in high school, I didn't really play basketball, and I wish I'd stuck it out. And for no other reason than my senior year, the 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 guys got a win over T Town on homecoming back when we still, you know, back when Yoga and T Town still played. And I can't imagine just to be on the bench for that, just to be in the locker room afterwards, just to go Was out. That to when the they carried up. John Brown around on the floor. Uh, no, John Brown wasn't there by now. That would be our Boris that was coaching by then. That would be our Boris that coached that team. So, um, but to, you know, to, to just be a part of, of that, uh, be a part of that, you know, or if a team makes a deep run in the postseason, you know, wouldn't it be, I'd, I'd rather be on the bench for that than watching it from the stands. I'm pretty sure like you're part of it. Right. Well, and that's the thing. And yeah, it just happens. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I played two years, and we were more or less, you know, I was two years behind, or I was a year behind Mitch and all those guys. So, you know, there was a very solid class, and they're just, you know, that was one of those writing was on the wall and, you know, wasn't putting in the time and effort to try to make a difference. So. Yeah. I just, uh, you know, <clears throat> if you're, if you're, I, I would just put this out there. If you're a kid who's, dressing varsity and and seeing the floor a little bit you know or, or you know not playing a major role but playing a role i mean just embrace it be be out there for it be play that role the best you can and you never know where it's going to take you and if nothing else there's going to be some fun wins to celebrate and you were a part of it okay yeah, if, sure. even if you scored two points or no points uh you know you you had something to do with it. Like everybody has, everybody has a part to play in it and you just gotta, 
you got to embrace it and uh, and and trust that the coach knows what they're doing. And I think ninety five percent of the time the coach does. You know, so that's that's our little tangent, I think. Uh, but uh, we'll probably yep. get off on that one more than more than one Every more. Once in a while, we do soapboxing. Yeah, All right. it's uh, but I think uh, we've gone on for an hour and fifteen minutes, uh, and uh, again, thanks to Aaron Britton for joining us uh, at Nesto Hoops on Twitter, uh, nestohoops dot com. Uh, if you want to, if you want to go to his website, which his website is just a means to download the spreadsheet, but, uh, right. but that's what that's what you want. Well, once it, you get the spread spreadsheet open, it is. Uh... It's a wealth of Full. information. Yes. Full of it's information. Awesome. It's awesome. So we're we're glad that we can get him on here. Um and and I think we'd like we'll probably have him on a couple of times during the year, if not just for 10 minutes, talking about his rankings. Primarily yeah. his one A and two A's, because really that's gonna right now be the most pertinent for us. Um got a couple candidates for next week, Whitey. I just gotta figure out uh who I want to get. Um but yeah, we'll go from there. Yep. But uh, in you know, this uh this uh this this coming week, you know, it's uh right back into the fray for everybody too. You know, T Town's girls haven't been they took the week off, so they'll they'll get uh, they'll get back to playing some playing some games. Uh looks I, I don't have it uh, down exactly what they've got, but I know the T Town boys they'll play Unity on Saturday. Uh we'll have that one on the radio um effingham's boys they're gonna have uh casey westfield tuesday which casey's casey's a good team don't they have somebody thursday they have like taylorville thursday yeah taylorville comes in thursday the apollo i mean that's that old apollo girls play on friday boys play on thursday every once in a while yeah doing doing an awful lot now and uh so taylorville and then uh, effingham goes to marion on saturday so they've got a who do they play in that or do they play marion yeah, I don't know actually. I don't know if they play Marion. I just had that they went to Marion. Uh, that's a shootout. I forget who they're playing. Um, yeah. So, and then again, uh, let's see. Uh, Friday night, well, St. Anthony's boys play Salem Tuesday, and then uh, they uh, then they they've got North Clay coming in Friday night. St. Anthony's girls. Uh, They uh they play Altamont not tomorrow but uh, a week from tomorrow, okay. um, so some big games on the horizon you know some uh, some interesting ones mm-hmm. right away and um, we'll talk about them but yeah. uh, no it'll be good and um, you know we're like I said gearing up for Christmas I've been entered all my results from all sixteen teams to date. Um, you know, I can kind of our pairings committee will get together and figure it out. I mean, we got a little more cross. Uh, you know, this team now plays a team who so and so's played that you know that helps you. It's not like you're seeding the NTC where you pretty well can do it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see. Should be good. All right. Well, I think. Oh, you, uh, did you see the three A state football score? No, I didn't. I haven't looked at any of that. Mount Carmel got beat sixty nine to seven. Ooh. No, they played in that it. That was the score. Yeah, they, that, I was shocked. I was shocked at the score. Um. Yeah, I mean Effingham. Coulda, shoulda won that game. You know, I know it's it's three A instead of four A. Like, uh, but the, <laughs> right. I, mean, I just when I saw that score, I was shocked. East St. Louis got beat, and uh, Lincoln Way East got beat. So they both took home second place. Rochester won again. So surprise, surprise. Yeah, huh? Pretty good outfit, Coach Leonard runs up there. Yeah, they're having having seen it in person. You know, it's uh, it's just a machine. You know, they're just oh yeah. They're just so sound. Yep. All right. Well, let's. Party, uh, brother. It's uh, it's late enough. I think we'll we'll call it a week, but uh, we'll be back at you next week. As season's underway, we're having fun with it, and um, 
looking forward to a good year of basketball. Yep. All right, Mike. Uh, until next time, take it easy. See you, Whitey. All right, later.